welcome to episode 51 of the Sports Geek Podcast. On this week's podcast, we have World Cup Fever, and we also look at how do you go about skilling up a digital team, and a listener question, what is the value of a hashtag? Welcome to the Sports Geek Podcast, the podcast built for the sports digital marketer. And now, here's your host, who thinks visits to the gym that aren't checked in in Foursquare don't count, Sean Callanan. Thanks, DJ Joel. That's right, my name is Sean Callanan from Sports Geek, and thank you again to listening to the Sports Geek Podcast. Foursquare, what about that? What have you thought about Foursquare's recent pivots uh, to having two apps, uh, Foursquare being a location discovery app and Swarm being the check-in app? I'm still unsure. I am checking in on Swarm when I go to the gym. Uh, the, the recovery from the Achilles is coming along well, but yeah, I'm still a little bit, I think they've missed their moment. Love to know your thoughts um, if you're still using Swarm and still using geolocation. Um, on today's podcast, I have a chat to half about the World Cup um, and how the Socceroos are traveling. And then after that interview, I'll take you behind the scenes and some of the things that we've been doing with the Socceroos to really engage uh, the whole Australian sporting public um, around around the Socceroos and, and sort of what the overall goal is. The other part of today is also what I'll be doing is I've been getting a fair few requests lately um, helping both clients uh, and teams replace staff and uh, get new digital people in and also reshaping digital teams. So what I'm going to do today is also look at you know how you go about one, recruiting digital staff, um, and also what the different types of staff there are now uh, these days. Um, and then, as we've been talking about, um, I wrote a post on LinkedIn on building a killer digital campaign. Um, I've had some great feedback from that and also had some great nominations that I'll be including in the seat. So I'll have a bit of a sneak peek at some of those campaigns later in the show. And also, we have a, t- we have a listener question asking, what is the value of a hashtag? Uh, in that sponsored environment. So I have I break that down, break that question down a little. But first, here's my chat with Half on SEN, and we'll come back to talk a little bit about the World Cup this Sean Callanan, our sports digital media guru for SportsGeekHQ.com. Ah, oh, World Cup fevers, I'm sure. Caught the officers of SportsGeekHQ.com. G'day, Sean. Uh, g'day, Half. You've got the ideal job. You know, the old sleep in till half past 11, then you just rock up to work. Half past you, 11, you, you reckon? You just sort of turn up here before the show starts, don't you? You reckon these kids are going to let me sleep till <laughs> half past 11, do you? Not a chance, mate. Not a chance. Although it's not great uh, for the time zone in Brazil, I've got to be honest. It is, it is a bit of a struggle. The 2 a.m. start's a bad one. 2 a.m. start uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, the soccer is playing against uh, Netherlands, but uh, they, I'm sure there will be a lot of people up. You know, you watch Origin, you'll be fired up, and no. then you just got to just stretch yourself to, to get to no, 2 a.m. Chance. No, I'm not, getting, I'm not going to bed at 4. I can tell you that much. I'm not going to bed at 4. Trust but you, me. But you would have watched the first game. Watched the first game. Loved it. And, got excited, uh, got passionate on social media. I was out and about, and 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 everyone was. And and the thing was, you know, stacks of love for for Timmy Carl. Like, what a performance, you know, to to kick his kick a goal in the last three World Cups. Yeah. Very select company. Um, and I've got a got a grab here from. I don't know if you saw his interview after the after the match, but it just sums him up uh, perfectly. It's all about defining moments. I've said this every single time. Being one of the older boys, this is the stage to do it. When you're called upon, you have to show up. And that's the thing, you, you have to show up, and he does. But now it, for the Socceroos, it's who's the next guy to show up? And I think that's what everyone yep. saw in that first game. You know, I was watching the tweets coming in um, and seeing everyone watching, and guys like Matthew Leckie, yeah, you know, 45 minutes time. before that game, a lot of Australia are going, who is this guy? And then he's blowing past guys, you know, Matt Ryan in defence, and, you know, some of those younger guys are the ones, you know, that Timmy Cut, uh, who is going to show up next? Yep. Um, and so I think that's where, you know, that's where the Socceroos, you know, and that's pretty much Andrew's plan, like he's getting these young guys on board, and that's pretty much what the Socceroos are, uh, are doing is to try to get Australia to know these guys, for one, for this for this tournament, for the longer-term view, um, for the next two games, you know, tomorrow and then, and then the next one, but then also for, for January when, when they'll be back here for, for the, the Asian, Asian Cup. Cup. Well, we so play a few games in Melbourne too, don't we? We, we do. There's, there'll be seven games and a, and a quarterfinal um, at Amy Park, and, you, you know, you can get tickets now. So, you know, the thing is, you know, learn who these, who these new guys are, and that's what I'm excited for to see, you know, these, these guys, 
you know, come up. You know, I was really disappointed to see Ivan uh, Franic, you know, do his, do his hamstring, yep. you know, a really good bloke. You know, I met him when we did some of the social media training sessions and he's been sharing all this great inside stuff from behind the scenes. Um, but he took all of that in, his, in stride, you know. He did his hamstring. He said, you know, what an achievement. I made the World Cup and I passed the ball to Timmy to get that goal. So I'm part of history. So yep. he really took that positive spin on it. So what I'll be looking for is to see what the numbers are at two AM, who are who are the real mad you know Aussie fans that are still going to be up, uh, still going to be tweeting, and you can't schedule your tweets. You can't just say I'm going to schedule a tweet to go off at half past two and say go Socceroos. <laughs> like, that's cheating. That's can cheating. You do that? Oh, yeah, of course you can do that. Can you play a tweet? Oh, yeah, of course you can. There's tools to do that half. Is there really? Yeah. So you know, so if you want to go to sleep, we'll set one up. But I want to see the passion. <laughs> like I don't want I don't want you to go go Timmy Kale and someone else scores a goal. You'll get found out. So. Right. But, so yeah, know. I want people to know on the on the sneaky SMS because uh, now it's on on Twitter. You're, you've got a dog. dog, yeah, sneaky SMS. Second so we want to hear people on the SMS. Who is the, who's going to be the next Aussie to, to show up? And make sure you cheer for him tonight. And hashtag Go Socceroos as well. We love that it's a big game against the Netherlands. Thank you, Sean. No worries, huh? Sign up for Sports Geek News at sportsgeekhq.com slash sign up now. So the one thing that was missing in that interview with half, sort of previewing the soccer, and I'm no, I'm no football expert, I'm, a, I'm anything but, um, was, was the content that was to come after that, after the interview. So what I'd uh, done in chatting with the guys at the FFA earlier in the week, sort of reviewing that first game, and also really picking apart that interview from Tim Cale. Tim Cale is the, is the biggest football star that that Australia has, and. Um, that we, they pretty much do want to uh, draw part of their strategy is to drive fans to the to the new stars. So we're able to take that quote uh, from that interview and really and really make it part of the content going going forward. So the afternoon in preview mode before that match against the Netherlands, um, we made a, a Facebook video because we had read really really good success putting up a video before the first game. Um, and it's really interesting that just today, uh, Facebook Newsroom have uh, released a a post, um, sort of really promoting the fact that they're giving uh, video, especially native video, and this apologies to YouTube. Um, they're really giving video a big bump, which is sort of what I was I was saying, and that's what we had seen in seeing a lot of teams put up video. So pretty much what what we did from the Socceroos point of view, we created a short teaser hype video, if you will. Um, and we really use those those words of Tim Cale. You you know you have to show up. Um, so one, it was that content that got everyone fired up before the game, and then it also was used throughout the game in showing in images that we put up on on Twitter and on uh, on on Facebook, in to say you know who has shown up, who will step up um, to really take it from that from that next level. So I guess it sort of leads me into the into the question around skilling up a digital team and and who you should get. Um, It has been a real journey in this space. When I started Sports Geek, uh, there was a lot of people uh, running what would be now digital departments as one-man operations. Um, You know, so people were the the web guy. Um, They had titles like webmaster, um, those kind of things. Um, Whereas now we have got fully-fledged digital teams and they're really, really content businesses. Uh, much like you know, my discussion with Richard Clark at, at Arsenal, their focus is producing content. So when people say we're looking for someone for our team, it's like, well, what are you looking for? What what need you what need do you have, and what do you where are the gaps? Um, so look, as we're sort of coming into the, um, both the drafts in the NBA and the and the NHL, and there's always that: uh, do you go for a certain skill need based type of thing, or do you go for the best skills available? You sort of have the same conundrum when you're looking to fill out your digital team. I guess the first thing that I would do is sort of break down what a team might look like, and then it's a matter of how many you might have in that role for what you're trying to produce. Um, so some of the th- things that you would you would have now as standard, and again, five years ago, this was normally a one-person team or a, or a or combination of the comms team and the IT department. Um, but now they're fully fledged digital media teams. Um, so you'll have writers, uh, whether they be a beat writer or someone who write features, someone that can write the articles. We need the content up on the website for people to read match reports, uh, in depth interviews, those kind of things. So, journalistic background, and we're seeing a lot of 
journalists moving from print and radio and and other medium to to move on to the club side of, of the business because there's uh, it's, it's definitely a skill needed. Which leads to the other side of it, uh, on-air talent, um, so both for video and audio. Um, so being able to hold a microphone, uh, have interview skills, go backwards and forwards with with players, with the, you know, the players, the coaches, those kind of things. Really important to, to have some media savviness about them. Uh, then the other, then the other kind of things that you're looking at video. As I just said, video is getting bigger and bigger. All the numbers across the board from everyone producing video from a team point of view uh, are blowing up. Especially now that a lot of teams are making sure that their video is able to be played on their mobile. All the views, are, all the views are going up. So being able to have someone who can cut together some great video content um, is a must. And but we all know that it is very time consuming. So it is one of the, it has been one of the jam uh, bottlenecks spots uh, for digital teams. Um, you know, wanting them to, to produce more video, um, but those people only having certain bandwidth. Um, then the other then the other types of um, roles is obviously graphics. Graphic producer. We're seeing a, a real rise in in style graphics, infographics, those kind of things as well. As obviously, they can provide resources internally to the to the marketing team and, and things like that. So it's really important to have someone with those graphic skills. And then the last one is is social media content and community manager. And I really think that second part of that that role is really important. Like the execution of social media, the tweeting at games, the posting of Facebook posts, um, that can be done with someone with a low lower level skill, like an entry level type person. Um, but it's the community management side of it that's really important, and then the other side of it is is the how how you go about um, executing that, how you do the tweets, how you cover the game, what kind of engagement you're going to have with your fans, how are you going to talk to your fans, so that the skill of the community management side of it and and engaging that community is more to me more important than just the executing and the broadcasting on 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 social. Now, can one person do all those roles? No, there is no super human. Uh, you know, sports geek injected type person to do that. Um, but what you want to do is is pick people that have the skills where you need the skills, uh, where you need the resources in place. So you might get a video person and they might be able to cover some of the social. What I like to do when working with teams is to make sure that there is a spread, that there is everyone in your team is multi-talented, that that your writers and your beat journalists and the, and the guys doing all the match reports do see social and are tracking what's happening on social because the listening side of things is terrific for one, content curation and, and creating articles from that content. What are the fans tweeting about? What are they posting on Instagram? That kind of thing. And also gives you that feel and that pulse of the, of the team. And then the other thing is, is if all your team is involved in that social side of things, both personally, but also looking at it from a professional point of view, um, it just gives that it gives your team a wider a wider spread of, of people and content pushing it out, um, but also puts more of a human face behind behind the team. You're always going to have the team account pushing out content, but it is good for the fans to know the people behind behind the scenes. So there's some of the things if you are looking one if you're looking for people. Um, you know, keep that in mind. Have those roles defined, and if you're looking to get in, you know, look at the gaps. Look at where teams are struggling. You know, I hear, I, I do get asked a lot. You know, how can I break into sports? What what should I try to be uh, learning? Obviously, video is a big one. If you can if you can cut video and you're good at video, um, it's really important. But also, work with the platforms that you're going to work with. So if you're going to be pitching for a social media role and those kind of things, you've got to use the platforms and use the newer platforms that no one knows about. Play around with Tumblr and Snapchat and all of these and Vine and all of these newer ones. Figure out how to use them on your own personal accounts because then that will make it far easier to translate when you're running a fully-fledged team account. So that sort of leads... So there's that part of it. Then the other part of it, I think, when you are looking for anyone in the in the sports space, is is the creativeness. 
Um, I think that's really important. If you're going to go pick someone that has similar types of skill, I'll always go with the creativeness, um, the enthusiasm, that kind of thing. But there's someone that's always got ideas and always coming at it from different angles. Yes, I think I've said it previously, um, uh, imitation is better than innovation. You can always copy other people, but where are they Where are they looking for it? Are they looking at other sports teams? Are they looking at, at how music bands are doing it? Are they looking at how big brands are doing it? Are they watching the World Cup and looking at the looking at how Nike and, and Adidas are battling it out and what co- sort of campaigns are they doing? What can you twist? What can you take into, bring into your team? So look at that creative person that, that comes up and says, I wanna do this video series on this or I wanna do this photo shoot in this particular way and push it out to a certain platform like Tumblr or do something specific on Instagram. Um, that stuff is, you know, is stuff you have to keep encouraging um, and if you have staff that push those limits, your fans will will love it. Which leads me to uh, some of the stuff that I've I've been collating and putting together, um, both my presentation and an ebook around killer digital campaigns around the world for, for Seat next year. Um, it's pretty much a it's a remix of what I did last year with uh, Philippe Dor at NASCAR, where we sort of looked at the digital campaign trifecta of content, data, engagement. I put up a post on on LinkedIn and I sort of dived into some of the things that I'm looking for and I've I've put out the call out to some people who've been on the podcast. You know, I'm lucky enough to have 74 people who have been on the podcast so far. So um, they're coming back with some some great content. Um, so the different areas that I'm looking for, I'm looking for video. I'm looking for how people are doing different video, whether it's feature series, behind the scenes, um, or even different ways of using it. Um, anyone that's doing long form articles, um, I really do feel they're making a comeback. I think sites like Grantland, Bill Simmons, Grantland.com has really given rise to that longer form, longer read. Medium.com is another one that's that's sort of encouraging people to read more. Um, I've seen a few sports teams do that. Um, other things like infographics, as I said, you've got the graphics people working it. Audio, as you know, I'm on podcasts, I'm doing podcasts, I'm loving podcasts. Um, and I'll, I'm interested to see how teams are using it. We've heard how uh, Arsenal use SoundCloud, but you know how how are you using audio clips? How can um, how have you engaged your fans? Uh, those kind of things. So again, if you've got a campaign, I've, I've got I've had some great ones in from from NASCAR, uh, the LA Kings. Check out the LA Kings site right now with the thank you uh, thank you messages coming in from all the fans after their Stanley Cup win. Um, those kind of things. Um, some stuff from um, Chris Freed at uh, University of Miami. They do some killer stuff. So I'm pulling this um, this ebook together. Um, I really would love to be really profiling people who are listening to the podcast, people who've been on the podcast, obviously. Um, but if you've got a killer campaign that you've done in the last 12 months, or you've got if you're a fan of a team and your team has done a killer campaign, please send me a tweet. Um, Sean at sportsgeekhq.com and just tell me what it is. Tell me what you loved about it and I'll, I'll follow it up and get some stats of behind the scenes stuff from, from the people involved. Find all Sports Geek podcasts at sportsgeekhq.com slash SGP. Got a listener question. Alexandra sent an email via the uh, Sports Geek mailbox. Uh, you can do that via sportsgeekhq.com dot com slash contact or just send me an email sean at sportsgeekhq.com alexandra writes first of all the subject i love the subject alexandra hashtag they or the hashtag that was the subject so it definitely caught my attention and she's asked me how much is a single tweet worth when a celebrity tweets it out to their x many followers um how much is it worth to a sponsor um, and to mine, I sort of go back into my IT game days when uh, people would ask me, how much is it going to cost to build something? Um, it's a little bit long, how long is a piece of string? It depends what they're asking for from an IT point of view. Um, but from a, from a sports sponsorship point of view, it's a little bit the same thing. It's where's the value for the sponsor? Um, that's more the question. What are they looking for? Are they looking for brand awareness um, and they want that that athlete to do one tweet and post it out. Now, if it's just one tweet, tweets are so disposable. Um, 
they get it gets sent. I think the average lifespan is three or four seconds these days with a tweet. There's so much people are seeing so much content. It might just fly by, and never get never get seen. So I'd be a single tweet would be part of a campaign for mine, um, and I'd be looking more to how can you best leverage that athlete. So whether can they can they share an image with the product? Uh, can they do it out to their Facebook? Can you amplify that that post, whether it be Twitter or Facebook? And this is where, for mine, Facebook provides a really great return from an advertising point of view to amplify that post because you have the same problem in in Facebook. It has a short spike, but can you extend it with a with a uh, by promoting the post further to the de- target demographic of the sponsor? Um, so it is it is hard. I can't say yes. It's a thousand dollars, or yes, it's a hundred thousand um, dollars, because it does depend on the on the sponsor and what they're what they're looking for. So that noise you're hearing underneath is from the sounds of the game from the Socceroos second match that I was previewing earlier. Socceroos skipper Mille Jedinak, not Mike Tony Abbott, is lining up on the penalty spot. Thanks to James Farmer for catching this one. has envy for James and all his crew. We've got a few mates that are over at the World Cup and have been to a lot of the games, a lot of the Socceroos games, obviously, but there have been a few games. And uh, Francis Leach, who I normally do grandstand on, he's over there posting photos. Uh, Jordan, uh, Steve, James, very jealous. Uh, I'm sure you like a lot of the listeners wishing that they had have gone down to Brazil to catch a few games that clock is telling me to wrap this episode up and get out. Uh, you can grab the show notes as you can always at sportsgeekhq.com slash 51. Um, that wraps up this episode of the podcast. Don't forget, you can still get tickets to see. There are a few more spots available, but they, they will be stopping selling soon. They're nearly full. You would have listened to episode... 49. When I spoke to Christine, um, this is going to be the biggest seat yet. Simply go to sportsgeekhq.com slash seat2014. And a big uh, congratulations. I don't believe I did it last podcast to everyone at the LA Kings, especially Aaron Lavelli, who's been on the podcast before. Congratulations on the Stanley Cup win. It's worth noting that the, the LA Kings jumped 2.5% in Facebook numbers after their win. And comparatively, the Socceroos 5.3 and US Soccer 5.1 in the week around the World Cup. Uh, So terrific job there by the LA Kings. Um, Also, a quick note, I had a chat with Neil Horowitz uh, this week for his podcast, Digital and Social Media in Sports podcast. Um, Give Neil a follow, NH287 on Twitter. I'll post the link uh, when that chat with him is up and about. My closing two cents this week, going back to skilling up the digital team. I'm a big believer in drafting for need, uh, fill those gaps, but always be looking for that ideas person. Please leave a review on iTunes. Go to sportsgeekhq.com slash iTunes. Find all Sports Geek podcasts at sportsgeekhq.com slash SGP. Want to maximize returns from your digital team? Contact Sports Geek about content and commercialization workshop. Thanks for listening to the Sports Geek Podcast.